Whatever happened to Happily Ever After? What I'm not gonna do today is give you a bunch of my opinions. What I am gonna do is lay out the math and science behind a successful retirement. That enjoying a happy retirement is within your grasp. Hey, Tom Hegna here with my 2017 economic commentary. For those of you who've been watching me through the years, I've been posting an economic commentary, I think ever since 2011 or 2012, and I've been very consistent saying that interest rates are gonna stay very, very low for a very, very long time. And year after year, more people said interest rates are gonna go up, and I said, no, they're not, they're gonna stay low. And every year, I've been right. Well, this year, everybody says interest rates are headed higher. And you know what I'm saying? Uh-uh. Interest rates are going to remain very, very low for a very long period of time. Look, I know it's been a crazy year. There was Brexit, where uh, Britain left uh, the Eurozone. Uh, President-elect Trump won uh, the presidency. And th these were things people were not expecting, all right? President Trump can do a lot of things to help this country and help growth. I think cutting taxes is going to be very good. I think reducing regulation is going to be very good. You can tell already the animal spirits are coming back. And so I think there's going to be a lot of good things that happen uh, in the next six months. But let me tell you a couple of things that President Trump can't fix. He can't fix our demographics. He can't fix our debt. And he can't fix the deleveraging that has to happen at some point. And so the three main courses that I've talked about for the last few years of, of debt, deleveraging, and demographics, none of that's going away. So we have seen interest rates in the short term come up. But if you go back to 2012, they're still probably lower than what they were in 2012. So even though interest rates have come up a little, they've come up from a very, very, very low base. Now, could interest rates go up a little bit more? Sure they could. But I'm saying I'm, we're not going to see interest rates of 5%, 6%, 7%, 8%. We're just not going to see that. Um, we are in a country that's $20 trillion in debt. We are in a world where governments around the world are over $60 trillion in debt. Well, let me ask you a question. What is debt? All debt is is taking from the future and spending it today. I've given you the example before that, you know, if it's football season and you want to watch the Super Bowl on a brand new big screen TV, but you don't have any money in your pocket, you go down to Best Buy, you take out your credit card, they're happy to swipe it for $1,500, you get to watch the whole season on a brand new big screen TV. Well, what did you just do? You took $1,500 of your future and you spent it today. What I am telling you is governments around the world have taken $60 trillion of our future and it's gone. So by definition, what does our future look like? 60 trillion plus interest, less than what it otherwise could or what it should be. Well, as we've said before, some of you've been in debt. You've had credit card debt, you've had student loans. What happens when you're paying off your debt? What aren't you doing with your money? You're not spending it or saving it. See, the paying off of debt is, is called deleveraging. It's highly deflationary. Now, how do governments get out of debt? Well, typically they raise taxes, they cut spending. Well, that strangles an economy that's highly deflationary. Now, the third way to get out of debt is what President Trump is talking about, which is growth. And growth is the best. We hardly ever hear about it, but now we're starting to hear about it. But I'm telling you, we can't grow enough because of the third big D, which is demographics. So you've got this massive debt that's, de that's deflationary. You've got this deleveraging that governments are going to have to do to get out of debt. That hasn't even started yet. And, and then you've got the demographics. We're getting old. Europe is old. Japan is very, very old. China will get old before they get rich. Do you understand old people don't spend any money? So think about this. These 78 million baby boomers, every single day for the rest of your life, they're going to be spending less and less and less. Europe is going to be spending less and less and less. Uh, Japan is going to spend less and less and less. So you've got this massive debt, this deleveraging, this demographic that's going to cause deflationary, not inflationary pressures. Now, Trump says he can get growth up to 4 or 5%. Highly unlikely. I mean, I hope he does. I hope he does. We could grow out of some of these problems if we did. And if he does get growth up to 4 and 5%, we will likely see interest rates go up. I'm just highly skeptical that it can be all done, all right, because of the demographics of the world. So here's the deal. Right now, I think the U.S. is the cleanest shirt in the dirty laundry. So yes, we have problems, but we don't have as big of problems as Europe. We don't have as big of problems as Japan. We don't have as big of problems as China. So my prediction is this, that the market, when it crashes, I don't know when it will, but it will, but when the market crashes, I don't believe it will be U.S.-based reasoning. I think it's going to be something overseas. Uh, Italy has huge problems with the Italian banks. The, the Italian banks are literally 
um, zombies and, and they, banks could fail. Greece is still in huge trouble. Um, other countries could choose, choose to leave the euro. If a, if a Spain or an Italy or a France or a Germany left the euro, that's game over. The euro, the euro will be done and that could cause huge problems uh, with many banks. So you need to know there's a big problem with European banks. There's also a big problem in China with their debt and their, their growth rate has been slowing. They've been trying to do all kinds of games to make that do better or look better. And so I think China has a big problem. Japan is way worse than we are. So if you want to know what's going to happen to us, like our, our debt and our deficits, watch Greece, watch Japan. We'll know what's going to happen to us by what happens to them because they're way worse than us. So what I would tell you is this. In the short term, it might be party on, you know, and, and everything's going to go good and the Dow may go over 20,000, but I think uh, it's not going to probably be sustained. And I don't believe interest rates are going to head much higher. They might head a little higher, but I think there's going to be some trouble somewhere in the world that sparks a big problem over here. You could see the market crash significantly, and at that time, interest rates will drop significantly. And I think we're going to continue to have very low interest rates as far as my eyeballs can see.